Hi everyone. Okay, this is just going to be a short video about um, greatest common divisors, and then yeah, we're just going to talk about greatest common divisors. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about unique factorization. Okay, so um, remember that uh, a divides b. That means there exists k such that b equals a k. Okay. And now we want to talk about, um, you know, common divisors and greatest common divisors. So if I have two integers, which are not both zero, a common divisor of a and b is just an integer d, which divides both of them. Okay. For example, the common divisors of 10, of 10 and 5, or maybe a more better example would be like 10 and 15, the common divisors would be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 5. Okay. <clears throat> and the great, uh, greatest common divisor is a number d, which is a common divisor, and then if you have another common divisor C, so D divides A, D divides B, and if you have another common divisor C, then C has to divide D. Okay, so D is like the largest, meaning that um, in, in terms of being, divis being divisible, like all the other common divisors must divide D. Okay, um, and that's kind of makes sense, but um, it's not too useful unless these things exist and we can compute them, so probably you know this, but there is an algorithm to compute the GCD and the GCD exists. Okay, so without loss of generality, to prove this, we'll assume that B is greater than A, which is positive. Um, if B equals A, you know, you're done because the GCD of A, of A with A is just A, you know, so, oh, GCD, sorry, um, GCD, that's an abbreviation for greatest common divisor. Sorry about that. Okay. And, you know, you can also assume that A and B are both positive because changing the signs doesn't change what the common divisors are. Okay, so we assume they're both positive, b is greater than a. So what we do is we just um, divide a into b using the division, using long division basically. Then we get a remainder r0. Now we divide r0 into a, we get a remainder r1. Then we do divide r1 into r0, we get a remainder r2. You know, eventually we get, uh, we divide rk minus one into rk minus two, we get a remainder rk, and we keep on going, keep on going, until, um, notice like each of these, r0 is less than a, r1 is less than r0, the, the sequence of remainders is decreasing, so eventually it must be zero. So in the last step, we get a remainder of zero, and rn times qn plus one equals rn minus one. Okay, and that is fine. Um, of course, you can do this, but the problem is, like, what does that tell us about the GCD? Well, um, we claim that the, this last non-zero remainder, Rn, is the GCD. Okay. And if we assume that the GCD of A, like for any integers A and B, the GCD of A and B is the GCD of A with B minus QA, which we'll try and establish in class. If we assume that, then um, then we can establish that Rn is actually the GCD of A and B. Okay, and the reason for that is well, the GCD of A and B is the is the same as the GCD of A with B minus Q zero A, but B minus Q zero A is just R zero. So the GCD of A and B is the same as the GCD of A with R0. Okay. So in other words, the GCD of these two is the same as the GCD of A with R0. 
Well, the same argument tells you that the GCD of A with R0 is the same as the GCD of R0 with R1. So you have another link saying that the GC of A and B is the same as GC of A and R0 is the same as GC of R0 and R1. Well, that's the same as the GC of R, R1 and R2. You keep on following down, you get like a chain, a, a, a links. Okay. And eventually you see that, well, the GCD of A and B has to be the same as each successive GCD of these, the next two, all the way down to the GCD of um, Rn and Rn minus 1. And what's the GCD of Rn with Rn minus 1? Well, Rn minus 1 is a multiple of Rn. Okay. So... The GCD of Rn with a multiple of Rn must be Rn. And that's the last non-zero remainder. That's what we wanted to establish that you can um, that you can compute the GCD in this way. Okay, and so that's it. Um, and th all that works as long as we establish this, which we will try to do in class together. Okay, um, we'll also try and do a few examples. Uh, let's do a quick application of the, this GCD. Okay. So we have this proposition. Um, suppose that C is a GCD of A and B, then we can write C as AX plus BY. Okay, um, so this these integers x and y, this is like a kind of a certificate that C is truly the GCD of a and B. Um, I'll try and explain more in class, but um, yeah, let's see how do we compute x and y, or how do we know they exist? Well, we go back to our equations that we wrote down for when we compute the GCD, just a sequence of long divisions or division applications of the division algorithm. And we note that every time, every term that appears in the left-hand side, we can write it in terms of A and B. Well, for B and A, it's easy. B is 0A plus 1B, and A is 1A plus 0B. Now for R0, R0 is just simply minus Q0 times A plus 1B. Okay. And how did we get that? Well, I mean, basically you rearrange this first equation, but there's another way to see it. That is, you take this line and subtract Q0 times this line to get this equation. Okay, so this um, plus this minus times negative Q0 gives you this. So you call this star, and maybe star star. So this equation minus Q0 times this equation gives you this equation. Um, and actually the same thing works for the next equation. This equation, sorry, this equation minus Q1 times this equation gives you the next one, right? And so let's pretend that we've computed all our GCDs, or sorry, all our remainders up to RK. And then we've done this process where we've computed RK minus two in terms of A and B and RK minus one in terms of A and B. And how do we compute RK in terms of A and B? Well, um, we know that uh, RK minus two minus QK times RK minus one equals RK. That is just this equation. That is just this equation rearranged. Okay, so therefore, if we do um, this equation minus QK times this equation, that'll give us an equation for RK because we'll get RK minus two minus QK times RK minus one, which is RK. And then on the right-hand side, we'll get some combinations of A and B and which combination we'll get xk minus 2 minus qk times xk minus 1 times a. We get yk minus 2 
minus qk times yk minus one times b, right? And so and now that gives you the next step in terms of a and b, and you just keep on doing that until you reach the end, and eventually you've written the uh, rn in terms of a and b, and rn is the GCD, so that's that's the end. Okay. And then we can kind of, I guess I'll do the fundamental theorem of arithmetic next time, but I just, we can just quickly apply this to get, apply this um, proposition to get a lemma. If A divides BC and GCD of A and C is one, so A and C have no common factors, then A divides B. Okay. And how do we do it? Well, we we apply the previous proposition, we say that AX plus CY equals one. Multiply by B, we see ABX plus BCY equals B. Now A divides A, A divides BC. So A divides ABX plus BCY, well that's just B. So A divides B, the end. Okay, and that's gonna be the end of this video. Um, in the next video we'll look at We'll look at um, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic.